annoying.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful day in the Lord's house. Let us all stand as we begin our worship with a Worship the King. It's 144, and we'll sing the first and last verse. for opening prayer gracious heavenly father we're so grateful to be here today and lord stir our hearts to worship you in spirit and truth lead us by your spirit and your word may all the songs of praise may our thankful hearts be a sweet fragrance before your throne of worship today lord anything that we need to surrender or lay down today Help us to do that. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. I like to say that worship is a position of our heart, and we will sing Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus 648, first, second, and fourth. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the standing let us stand amazed at 147 1 2 and 4 I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean how Oh, wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden. He prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grief 
but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with ransom and glory his face I at last shall see, twill be joined through, through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Thank you. You may be seated. Let us adore him. Father, we adore you. First and last. I mean all. we prepare for a time of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, first and last, 827. Good morning, everyone. 
We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. We're going to take a few moments and look at our prayer list and talk about any additions or updates we have. Um, we're glad to have Patty back with us. Yeah, well, I'll say the same thing about you that I said about Wayne and Ruth, and that when this side, when somebody's missing, it kind of looks a little bare over there, so <laughs> glad, glad to have you back. Um, another praise we have is Metro ha had a great niece born. When was that, Metro? Thursday. Thursday. So that's a huge praise for, for you. Uh, I got a call um, from Mana this morning, Mana Lewis. Um, her and Rick have been absent because they tested positive for COVID about a week, week and a half ago. Um, they are doing um, decent. Um, they're starting to kind of get through the woods of it, but if you would keep Rick and Mana uh, in your prayers as well. Um, and we need to be praying, Angie, you have a procedure tomorrow. So we need to keep Angie in prayer for her procedure um, that she is going to go through. Um, Mule family had the death of a grandson this week, so we need to keep them uh, in the, our prayers as they are going through their grieving process. Um, and also the last one I have this morning, um, Zoe, that comes a friend of hers, a had a three-month-old child that is getting ready to have surgery, so pray for that child as, as he's going through surgery. Um, huge praise. Jim got a good report at his doctor, so that's another huge praise that we have for him. Now, if we get him to slow down and quit injuring other parts of his leg, then that would be great. Yeah, huge praise for Lee. She got a great report this week at her oncologist appointment, so huge praise. praise huge praise for Lee Are there any others yes okay what was her name, her name is Melissa Theris. Melissa Theris. We'll keep Melissa in her prayers as she's going through this recovery time uh, and just going through rehab. So keep her in prayer. John. Chris Conrad, make sure to keep her in our prayers this week for her health issues. Jim. Okay, Jim's wife, Dana, keep her in prayers for just, just her health and her health issues. So just keep praying for her. Yep, 17 month old, keep praying that he'll get through what's going on and that she'll be able to come home. Absolutely. Chris? A praise and prayer to keep uh, excited about the new Sunday school class. A young adult starting next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock downstairs in the basement. Absolutely. Eric? So that's a prayer and a praise. Just <laughs> it's so exciting. We're so glad for glad for the two of you. All right. Well, 
if there is nothing else, uh, then let's take this time and let's go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we are, we're just so grateful, Father. Uh, grateful doesn't even begin to describe how uh, our body of Christ is. Um, Father, we're so thankful uh, for the praises that have been mentioned um, because, Father, we see your hand at work and we know uh, through your works we, we can see how much you care about us and how much we are affecting the kingdom of God. And, Father, we are so also so thankful that all these prayer requests, all these things that are on our hearts and our minds, that we can lift them up to you this morning, Father, uh, and we know that they're taken care of because, Father, you are the great physician. You are the healer. Uh, we know that you can take care of each and every situation. Uh, Father, I pray that you would help that you would help us to understand uh, your will in these situations, that we would accept your will in these situations. Father, as we continue with this worship service this morning, as we gather around the table, as we dive into your word, uh, Father, I just ask that you would continue to fill this place with your presence, that you would help us to learn what you would have us to learn this morning. Thank you, Father, for always being with us each and every day. And it's in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For our communion song, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, 315, first and last, please. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful day. There was a four year old in church yesterday. Sandy and I just celebrated our four year old daughter and two year old daughter's birthday put together because they're born like about a month apart. <laughs> so, if any of you know how a four two and four year olds are with a lot of questions and a lot of energy and this little four year old was at church while they were taking communion and and uh, he wanted to partake of communion and his mother said uh, well you're not old enough and he was disappointed at that response and later the collection plate was coming by and she knew her son had a dime to put into the collection plate, and she said, aren't you going to put that dime in the collection plate? He says, if I can't eat, I'm not paying. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 26, 26 says, 
that Jesus was with his disciples, and as they were together, Jesus took bread, and he blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. You know, there's a miracle, I believe, that happens every time we partake of Holy Communion. That God's presence is here with us and does things within our hearts as we examine ourselves and surrender ourselves to God during this holy time. I'm also reminded of the miracle where Jesus was teaching a lot of people, 5, 000, over 5,000 people, and over the course of two days they were very hungry, and he does the, the miraculous feeding of the 5,000, and I'm sure Jesus said at that point too, take, eat. And right after that story in the scriptures is when the disciples get into a boat and there's another miracle of Jesus walking on the sea. And at the end of that story, Jesus miraculously calms the sea. So if there's something in your spirit that needs to be dealt with today, if there's something in your spirit that needs to be calmed today, this is the time to do it. There's a poem I have as we go into ready for Holy Communion, and Hunter's going to sing a song to prepare us for that. The poem goes like this. There's not a hunger that Jesus cannot satisfy. There's not a thirst that he won't gratify. There's not a pain that Jesus can't heal. There's not a void that he won't fill. There's not a burden that Jesus can't bear. There's not a soul that he won't spare. There's not a disease that Jesus can't treat. Praise the Lord, Lee, <laughs> and others. There's not a grievance that he won't meet. There's not a fear that Jesus can't still. There's not a promise that he won't fulfill. There's not a doubt that Jesus can't replace. There's not a heart that he won't embrace. So let the heart of Jesus embrace you during this time. And as Hunter sings this song, meditate on the words that he is singing so beautifully. No matter what you face, no matter what circumstances are going on in your life, that Jesus can take care of it.
upon the waters or calm the raging sea but I know a man who can and I can Blind eyes to open or make the lane to walk again, but I I know a man who can see I can't walk. Upon the water, and I can't calm those raging seas, but I know a man who can. I can't cause the blind eyes to open or make the lane to walk again, but I, I know a man. can help you and your life is out of hand I I know a man yes I I'm always amazed how God works things out together. I did not know Hunter was singing that song today, and I said, well, we're going to do that for communion because it all goes together. <laughs> Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who made a way for each one of us on the cross through his resurrection power that we too can overcome any storms of life, whatever we face that we all know a man who can. And Lord, bless the elements today, the bread and the cup, 
Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus' love for us. And Jesus' spirit that helps us even today. And Lord, as we examine our hearts and just meditate upon those beautiful words that Hunter sang, Lord, lead us into that holy moment, not only with you and with ourselves, but if there's anybody else we need to make a relationship right with, Lord, that you would put that in our heart this morning and that we would go quickly and make that so. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your presence here at this moment where we eat together and drink together of this new kingdom life that Jesus offers us today and every day. We are so grateful. Amen. I couldn't find that instant solution. I found myself showing signs of deep struggles, anxiousness, panic attacks, obsessive thinking, obsessive compulsive thinking, depression, these emotions that I'm struggling with. And there were battles in my life that 
couldn't make sense, I couldn't just fix with just a change of a thought. The reality was these were deeper heart-related issues that I needed to address. I actually needed to slow down and let God do some deeper work, especially around the subject of his love for me. You see, what was happening was my focus on growth was focused on performance. It was focused on achievement. It wasn't focused on what it looks like to grow in the love that God has for me. You see, most of the things I was struggling with, and most of the things that most people struggle with, have to do with some kind of compromise of love in their life. It's interesting, isn't it? When we really think about love, what, stru- what stood out at me is, we think love is performance-based. Welcome to February, the month of love. We're going to be talking today about God's love for us. That is Mark Jesus. He is a mental health specialist. He is a Christian. He has lots of different content on YouTube. Um, he has over or just, just under 5 million views on his videos. Uh, so I ran across this and that really got me thinking about that. When I look at God's love, do I look at God's love based on my performance? Based on my performance. How many of us in this room, don't raise your hand, but just think about it. How many of us in this wor- look at this world as performance-based? I think if we're honest, all of us do, because everything in our life is somewhat performance-based. We do well at work, we get rewarded. When we don't do well at work, we get punished. Maybe demoted. Maybe lose our job. We feel great when we can go to the grocery store and when we get our bill at the end, we can see that we saved 40 bucks. That's performance. We did a good job at the grocery store saving $40. When we turn on the TV and we see sitcoms, Things on that sitcom are performance-based. Our life in this world, in this imperfect world, is reality of performance-based. Now, here's a more difficult question. How many of us, at one time or another in our lives, have thought, God couldn't love me because of fill-in-the-blank? God can't love me because of this sin I just committed. God couldn't love me because of what has happened in my life. God can't love me because of this reason. And we make excuses why God can't love me. That is a performance-based thought process of God's love. Because if I sin, that means God can't love me. If I sin in this way, God can't love me. And that is just simply... That is just simply not true. It is just simply not true. I found this very cool little thing. And if you can't read it, the little bottom of it, I'll read it for you. Because God loves me, God shows me His loving patience no matter what I have done or how far I have wandered. Read that again. Because God loves me, God shows me His loving patience no matter what I have done or how far I have wandered. Now the question I have for us today is do we really believe this? Do we really believe that it Do we really believe that it doesn't matter how far we've wandered? Do we really believe it doesn't matter what performance we've given God that God still loves us? The Sunday school answer is yes, we believe that. But when it comes down to when it's just you by yourself with the thoughts in your head, are we really believing that when we are alone with our thoughts 
Do we really think that God loves us even when we've messed up? Do we really believe that God loves us when we have fallen victim to sin time after time after time again? Do we really feel like God loves us when we can't love ourselves? So for today, let's push the performance-based thought process aside and let's look at God's love. Let's look at it through the eyes of not, am I good enough, but is God? To start off with this morning, we're going to read a a very familiar verse. John chapter 3, we're going to read verses 15 through 17. I know we can all quote John 3, 16, but we're going to read 15 and 17 as well. John 3, 15 through 17 reads this. So that everyone believes will have eternal life in Him. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through Him. Now, we know John 3.16 by heart. We've learned it since we were little kids. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Now, I know that that we know that the words to that, but let's think about it in this. Is that verse give us any indication that God's love is performance-based? No. Because it's not about us, it's about Christ and His sacrifice. It's about Christ and His sacrifice for us. Then in verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to judge the world, but so that the world might be saved through Him. When we look at that, that's the polar opposite of performance-based. It's the polar opposite. Because God sent Jesus in the world not to say how bad we are, but to say, here, look how, look how good God is. Look how good my Father is. Look, look what we can, look what kind of a life you can have if you would just follow me. When we look at Jesus' life on this earth, we see that he loved prostitutes. He loved the people that we've talked about this before that we wouldn't go near. Jesus loved them. Do you think they did anything performance wise to earn that love? No, because they were incapable. They were incapable of knowing who Jesus was, and Jesus loved them anyway. Jesus loved them anyway, no matter what their past was. Romans 5, 8 says this. Romans 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We're still, we were still sinners and Christ came. You know, when we think about sin and we think about evil in this world, I got asked the question this week, what does evil look like to you? And my answer was, it's, like a, it's, it's sweet, it's like candy. Sin looks good. Sin sometimes feels good. And while we were still living in a life where we were trying to feel good, while we were trying to get our own self-gratification, Christ came and died for us and said, it doesn't matter what you've done. And I don't expect you to be perfect. But here, let me take care of your sin. Let's have eternal... If you accept it, we will have eternal life. So God's love is not performance-based. There's nothing we can do to earn God's love. God gives it to us freely, but we have to accept it. We have to accept it. Leads us to kind of my second thought. 
I picked up one of these. They're still sitting in the back. This is from when Jim DeWar came and spoke. There's some questions in here that I don't want anybody to answer out loud. I want you just to think about it. He asked 10 questions when he was here. Number one, do you struggle with depression, fear, or anxiety? Number two, have you ever thought about or attempted suicide? Number three, have you had a sexual relationship with someone you weren't married to? Four, have you been physically abused or physically abusive? Number five, have you ever been addicted to something? Number six, do you take medication for mental or psychological struggles? Number seven, are you ashamed of your sex life? Number eight, are you lonely? Number nine, have you ever struggled to believe God loves you, He likes you, and He wants the best for you? Number 10, do you have any secrets? When Jim was here, we filled these out and asked questions and we got rid of them. How many of us today are still holding on to the things that are on this card? Don't raise your hand, just think about this. How many of us are still, this becomes our identity. This becomes the, the struggle that we have every day. And this is the thing that gets between us and God. Because we're viewing God like we view ourselves. Broken. Hurt. And we view ourselves in the way that this card makes it out to be, and God doesn't see it that way. You know what God sees? God sees us all in the same way as children that He loves, not because of anything that we can do, but because of who we are. But because of who we are. Hunter, throw the third one up there. If you remember nothing from this sermon, remember this. I'm not perfect, but God loves me anyway. It has nothing to do with, with the things that matter to us. It has to do with God's love that is better than we can ever imagine it. It's something that we can't imagine because we think of everything or most everything is a performance, and it's not. So today, my question for us is this. Are we going to continue to look at God on a performance scale? Are we going to continue to look at our relationship with God as a performance-based scale? Are we going to continue to allow Satan to drive a wedge between us and God because of how we feel? Or are we going to turn everything over and are we going to understand that God loves us as imperfect, as struggling people that need Him? Are we going to view our relationship with God like that or are we going to continue to view our relationship with Him and our love for Him as performance? Are we still going to sit at home by ourselves and beat ourselves up because we don't feel like God could love us? Or are we going to sit at home and say, God, I don't feel like I, don't feel like I love myself, but I know that you love me. The choice is yours. But I want you to understand that you're not perfect, but God loves you anyway. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning as imperfect people. Father, we come to you as struggling people. We come to you, Father, with our own battles that we face every day. And God, we, we, we're sorry that we view your love as something that we have to earn. And we view your love as something that we have to win. Father, we come to you right now and we lay these things at your, we lay these thoughts, these feelings of being performed, that we have to win your love, that we have to win our own love for ourselves, and we, we just lay them at your feet, Father. 
Father, help change our hearts and help change our minds to understand how you love us and how it has nothing to do with what's happened that day. It has everything to do with who you are. Father, help us to learn that today and this week and moving forward in our lives. Help us to to remember that. And Father, as we continue with worshiping you, Father, I ask that you would continue to fill this place with your presence, that you would that you would help us to find the peace that you would have us to find in your love. And it's in your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. Have you been to Jesus is our hymn of invitation. If you have a decision to make for Jesus, we invite you to come forward. If you'd like to join our church family, we invite you to come forward. But we also invite you to come forward and pray if you would like to. If you want to just kneel at the altar, if you want to kneel here and just pray, you're more than welcome to do that. But this is also a time for us to worship without the distractions. So let's stand and let's sing, Have You Been to Jesus? A lot of awesome things happening in the life of the church, um, the, lots of different things, so make sure you are reading your bulletins and making notes. Um, as Chris mentioned earlier, there's going to be a new discipleship class starting during the Sunday school hour. They will be meeting down in the old fellowship hall downstairs. Um, so if you have any more information or want more information, you can talk with Chris. But it's going to be a great class of learning discipleship uh, with him. So um, if you would like to more information, see him and plan to attend. Angie. Also starting next Sunday at the EPSA, we're going to start a young adult class. Uh, that's going to be 10 on Sunday evening. Sunday evening, young adults. If you want a definition of young adult, I guess see Angie or somebody for a definition, I guess. You're young at heart. Young at heart. There we go. There we go. Are there other announcements? Mary Lou. Okay. Well, I think they can hear me, but that's okay. So we um, February is always the month for our Christian Companions uh, annual fundraiser. For many years, we had the soup and sandwich supper in February, and we always took up love donations. And then when COVID came along, we weren't able to do the dinner anymore, but we are gonna revamp that this year. We're gonna join with the fellowship committee. So the last Sunday in February, we'll be having soup and sandwich dessert. There will be a donation basket, but we also will be taking up donations all month long. So if you aren't able to attend the dinner and you'd still like to donate, uh, we would appreciate that. The Christian Companions, we're very small, but we are mighty. We donate to the um, 
Northeast Haiti Mission, we do the Christian Fellowship, we support Hoosier Christian Auxiliary, and many, many projects. As you know, we did the the backpacks and the Andes for kids, and uh, we supported someone that lost their home in a fire, and just any any need that comes along, the ladies are there. So keep in mind that this is our Love Offering Month. Also, um, we we're supporting our RATA sales last year. We kind of beefed that up a little bit. We chose to do it quarterly, so we weren't just having it all the time. So the month of February also happens to fall that we will be taking up RATA orders again this month, and then we won't do it again till May. So if anybody would like to order any RATA cutlery, maybe you got something at Christmas and you fell in love with it and you want another one, We'll be taking up those orders. You can turn them in to Kim Underwood or Sherry or Amy or I or anyone, anyone, and we'll make sure that that order goes in at the end of the month. So we got two projects going this month. Uh, the other thing I want to mention, um, I hope I'm not stepping on anything, but I know the local children's church camps are starting to take registration for this summer. and. Um, one of my granddaughters has chosen to go, and I'm very excited for her to experience that. When back in the 60s, I'm going to age myself, but back in the 60s, when I was young, we didn't have all these travel sports and stuff, and church camp was our highlight. We could not wait to go. Hilltop was kind of run down then, so we all attended Camp Eliana over in Washington, Indiana, and it was a wonderful place. You go in and the, the canteen and the mess hall was there and there was four girls dorms and there was a deep valley there. Go up a hill and the lake is over there and they put the boys dorms way over there. Well, us girls never understood that, but I've got an answer. It was because Pat Bayhan was there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pat, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> But, but serious, all jokes aside, uh, if you have a child or a grandchild or a neighbor or a friend or anyone that you would think they might enjoy church camp, please encourage them to go. I know the registration is open for that. So thank you so much. That's it. Yeah. Congratulations to the girls' basketball team. They won their sectional, and Lizzie is a cheerleader, so she cheered her heart out this week. So, way to go, Liz. So, <laughs> thank you. Okay. You're on the clock. Um, yeah, <laughs> make it short and sweet. Um, some of you may know Tim Warren has always mowed the churchyard here for several years and he's done such a wonderful job and he's let us know that he is uh, stepping down and no one kind of cut back a little bit he's retired so if anyone is interested or know someone that is interested in uh, placing a bid to mow the churchyard just have them send it to the email here at the church it's volume christian church 12 at gmail.com so we're going to have that it's going to be closed at the end of february Thank you. Yes. On here, the list of peanut butter is on two different groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know there's no peanut butter in my house. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Angie. Awesome. Yes.
there is nothing else, then let's stand as we have closing prayer and then we will sing our closing song. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we've been able to be in your house this morning and to worship you. Father, as we go about our normal, our daily lives, I ask, Father, that you would help to lead us and guide us and direct us. And that, Father, that you would protect us from whatever Satan is going to throw our way this week. Help us, Father, to remember that your love is not performance-based. Help us to follow your will this week. And please keep us safe, Father, until we can meet together again. And it is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.